Welcome to Revolution TV. Right here with me today is Alexander Bigler. I believe, sir, your title is Head of Watchers for Christie's. Is yes. that right? Yes. Basically, he is a watch expert like many of you who are watching. But this is a very special treat for all of you who love vintage pieces because he is also an auction expert for Christie's because we are at Christie's Preview in Singapore right now. I understand that there's going to be a Christie's auction in Hong Kong yes. in a month from now. Yep, on the 27th. So this special pop-up exhibition in the Arts House and Victoria Theatre in Singapore is to highlight some of the craziest out of this world rare pieces that have travelled all the way here. But they are not for auction here, right? Correct. They will only go under the hammer in Hong Kong on 27th on November. On the 27th, yes. Okay, Alex, welcome to Singapore. Thank you Thank for you. taking the time. Um, maybe we could start with one of, which one's your favourite piece? Oh, there's a lot here. Uh, which one do you prefer, vintage or contemporary? Um, maybe we, let's start with the Patex because there's so many of them. Okay, sure. Uh, I recognise this one as the 5004. It is such an important piece in uh, Patek history. So many movements have been built upon this, have been based upon this. Yes. Um, could you tell me a little bit about this? I mean, I love that the, the details are gilded, even the, the moon face, the moon is gilded. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, it's, it's really an exciting piece to see coming back to the market. I yeah. mean, we had seen this piece come back to the market a few years ago, and now it's back, and it's a unique piece. So the, the excitement, like you said, it's a Lemania-based movement. Mm -hmm. But, and 5004 are really growing in popularity for the, for the complication, for the yeah. size it offers. But here, obviously, it's blessed with an amazing dial. And the dial is unique. So it is a lot happening on the dial. So, yeah, like you know, vintage real tracks. Yes, you yeah. have a vintage feel to it, but it's also busy with a tachymeter scale. Then you have yeah. those Roman numerals at 12. And then you've got those dots also that are reminiscent from vintage pieces mm. also as the indexes. And then there's luminescent Asen also, which adds some rarity to it. Oh. And then, yeah, so yeah, and yeah. it glows in the dark too. <laughs> wow, so, cool. so quite nice for, for a Patek from that period. And yeah. then also it's What's got the, the, the embossing of the, the signature of the, the, the owner of Michael Ovitz just at six o'clock, really on the dial. Yeah, so just at the very bottom, you can see his uh, initials. Michael yeah. Ovitz, it's yeah. tiny, but I'm sure it's tiny, under, but it's under a loop, you will be able to see this yeah, very exactly. clearly. Exactly. And what's a beautiful surprise about this 5004, right, is you flip it over and the transparent case back shows such depth of field for the skeletonization. So many layers of bridges comprise this, this skeleton movement. Yeah, yeah, it's really impressive. The engineering is, is phenomenal. And I think more and more of our collectors are appreciating this type of, you know, craftsmanship. Really, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's gorgeous to see. We would have loved that on some of the vintage pieces, the earlier pieces, mm. you could see through right away, but it came at a later stage and on 5004, it's really yeah. a blessing to look at it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you who are Patek fans, you already know that 5004 is so important to the collection. Uh, thank you for those of you who caught our recent coverage of the Patek launches. As you know, so many modern Patek Philippe pieces are based on the 5004. Uh, and that would bring us on to another living legend, a little bit bigger. This is the 5208. Yes. So the, this, this example comes, in fact, from the Champion Collection mm. that we're selling the final chapter this uh, November. Yeah. And basically, all of his watches were kept in, in like new condition. He hardly ever wore his watches. <laughs> so oh, it's, a, it's a privilege for the, for the next owner in, in that sense. Yeah. Uh, he loved yeah. the hunt. He loved the hunt. And once he owned them, he moved to a next one. So this one is in really exceptional condition. And yes, it's one of their top of the line at Patek Philippe. So it has a mini repeater, yeah. an instantaneous perpetual calendar, um, and uh, it's cased in a gorgeous, beautiful 42 mm case in, uh, in platinum. So three, four complications onto one? Well here, yeah, you have yeah. a mini repeater, instantaneous perpetual calendar, and then a single button chronograph. So you have three. And a moon phase. Of course, the moon <laughs> phase gotta be there. Yes, yes. And uh, I love the display of the, the calendar. It's like a radio display at the one, two, three. Yes. Uh, the 12, one, two, three positions. Yeah. And the sound, you listen to the sound later on, the sound is absolutely okay. exceptional. Okay. You know, it's crystal clear, mm -hmm. uh, it's well paced, it's, it's really phenomenal. Really mm -hmm. phenomenal. I don't know if you would agree with me, but uh, one of the most important pieces for this auction is 
the world's, arguably the world's first wartime watch by Patek Philippe. Yes. Which is the 1415 Air Universal. Air Universal, of course, is French for wartime. What can you dream you watch? You dream watch? No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to afford this even if I sold my, my home and, and my kidneys. Um, no, it's, it's, it's really exceptional to have another example coming up at auction. Yeah. We don't see them often. This is a sort signature, so it's a watch that was made just 1948, so at the bridge where we start calling them Patek Philippe and not mm. Patek Philippe and Co. Mm. And obviously it's exciting to try and go back in time and imagine how it was then, you know, just after the war, yeah. being able to start traveling again yeah. and wanting to own a watch mm. that will tell you, you know, the time of from around the world, just on your wrist. And having Louis Cotier being able to create this mechanism yeah, to yeah. be able to have basically all the cities on your wrist instantaneously and so easily read, it was something quite special. Oh, you're, so, you're totally right. Uh, yeah. Cheers to Patek Philippe for this. And of course, Louis Cotier, we pour one out for you. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, Patek vintages, right? Uh, today's World Time watches are based on this watch and several other Patek Philippe collaborations, right? Yes. Yes, yes. This is the first edition. And then they moved on, 25, 23, and then they moved on to some yes. of the more world times yeah. that you know, more yeah. classic today. And as you were saying, uh, as the industrial era progressed, as aviation progressed, as telecommunications progressed, people wanted to communicate real time with one another. So that's why this watch came about, correct? Exactly. <laughs> so a, two, a true treasure of time. <laughs> um, Shall we talk about the datograph? Yes, The perpetual absolutely. that is accurate for at least 122 years. Yeah, beyond us, beyond Can, us. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe if, if you keep well, you might live longer than that. Uh, the longer perpetual datograph. This is a real treat. Well, what's great is the honeycomb. You know, the honeycomb the, color yeah. that was inspired from their earlier pocket watches mm -hmm. and that they create this unique color for them which is based of also some extra silicone with the gold. So they have the secret recipe obviously of the color wow. but it's really really nice and they really bless all of their limited editions with honey gold. So if you have a Lange in honey gold color uh, it's definitely a limited edition. Here it's number 50 out of 100. Yeah. So a nice yeah. piece to see. We, we obviously don't see them every day so they're great to look at and the color is so unusual you know, from the, the standard yeah. gold that you see uh, usually. What, what kind of bid might you be expecting for this perpetual datograph? Well, here they start quite attractively, but I think, you know, below, between 50 to 80,000, you know, US dollars, mm. you, you have a chance of, of securing these type of, uh, of watches. So really, in fact, quite affordable compared to some of the pieces that we just spoke about. Okay. It's also a, a great longer to, to start with. Okay, and maybe if we could just go back a little bit, to the other three Patek Philippe's, what do you think sure. the estimate bids will be for? Like? Yes, for the 5208, you're going to be looking at somewhere around a million US dollars. Yeah, it's a oh, million dollar watch. You better not drop this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be working so for a different well, budget okay. from Yolange, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then for the world time, you're going to be starting roughly uh, at around 200 to 300,000 US dollars. And then mm. pending the condition here, it's really a, a gorgeous example in condition. It could go up to half a million US. Mm. But there's always an opportunity at auction that, you know, you get, you also get a good deal. <laughs> 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 Just don't tell too many people about the auction. <laughs> and the, the legend that is the 5004. Yeah, the 5004. Well, we'll see. Well, we'll see how the market responds on the day. Yeah. Because it's a unique piece, you know, anything can happen. So mm. again, you're between half a million to a million US dollars for the watch. So okay. uh, collectors will, will show their, their colors, their true colors on the day. <laughs> Let me remind you that there are lots more rare vintages in this Christie's Autumn Auction happening in Hong Kong in November. Uh, but one very special piece amongst the many pieces that are available is the Royal Oak in frosted finish. This is solid gold, it's yes. frosted finish. This is the Carolina Bucci uh, special limited edition and you were saying that she is a artisan from Florence? Yeah, she's based in Florence and she's a goldsmith and she's a designer and she's been working with AP for quite some time now yeah. and obviously her technique is quite unbelievable so she uses a hammer mm. with a diamond tip on it wow. and to be able to create this frosted effect which is really unbelievable. It really makes you feel of that, that, that glow that you have when you're looking at snow, powder snow when you're in Switzerland. Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's, it's really got this, this, this amazing look. And then the mirror finish also, this, this liquid finish which captures the light oh from goodness. different angles and you know, you, you really live with the watch in different yeah. ways, you know, pending where you are. 
So it really has its own character and it's, it's, it's a very interesting, intriguing model that they've created there in fact. So mm -hmm. yeah, very exciting and only 300 pieces made. Mm -hmm. And again, coming from a top collection in, in superb condition. So here in worn condition in fact. So quite exciting. Quite I'm exciting totally unworn. Totally unworn, you still have the original. It was, it was owned but it wasn't. It was owned, yeah. yeah. Just he, kept in a... He was like that. <laughs> yeah, he was like that. Some collectors are like that. Yeah, but to bring back to your point about the mirror finish dial, right? If you guys take a look, you can actually see your reflection in the mirror finish. That's that's uh, how unusual this watch is. And it's so beautifully contrasted against the frosted finish of the links that uh, you rarely see on AP. Yes, links. yes, totally. Um, so, I guess for those of you who are excited watching this, right, the big burning question is how can someone participate? I mean, you can't fly in to Hong Kong. You and can. You can uh, register. Can. Yeah. Uh, how else can you, are you able to participate online? Or? Yes. Okay. So you can bid online, so you register your account mm -hmm. with us, which is rather easy. It's a few steps. It's okay. like a bit like opening a bank account, but just okay. a bit easier. And after that, you're allowed to basically bid online. So you could be at home on your iPad, on your computer, mm. and then you can click whenever the auction is happening. Mm. Or if you're not tech savvy or you don't feel that your connection is going to be that good, depending where you're traveling, yeah. you could also be getting a call from us. So we could be calling you on the day and tell you, well, be prepared oh, okay, on okay. that day at that time. Mm. We will be calling you for that lot and then you can bid live and mm. we will be able to execute the bid for you. And if you don't want to get emotional, then you can also leave an absentee bid, which is you know, a piece of paper where you agree yes. to put a maximum amount that you'd be ready to spend, okay. and the commissioner, the auctioneer on the day, mm. would execute it for you. And that could be also a nice way of you trying mm. to say, well, that's the price I would like to pay, and if I get it, then I'll be even happier. Okay. Um, what are the more affordable, the entry-level pieces that we might see at this auction? There's a lot. At the top of my head, uh, the ones that are popular are the mm -hmm. Gerald Genta Mickey Mouse okay. and Donald Duck family watches. Okay, how much those, are those going for? Like those are starting, I think, like 5,000 US. Okay, yeah, okay. So they, they're, quite, they're quite attractive in price. I mean, there's a whole spectrum of watches that are usually attractive in price mm -hmm. to look at. The auction in general is supposed to attract people for the good yeah. prices there too. Yeah. And then people assess condition and, and, and move forward. So, so there'll be quite a large selection there. Mm -hmm. But also from other brands, you could have really treasures from the 50s, 60s, starting at 10,000, 12,000, okay. and to be able to pick up and, and have really a piece of history on your wrist. Yeah. Um, I understand that there are a few uh, precious jewels. There is like a, something really caught my eye was the picnic edition of the Birkin also. Yeah. And of <laughs> course you've got the, the <laughs> like T-Rex. Yeah. You gotta come and see the T-Rex. <laughs> okay. T-Rex is impressive. Yeah, that's really amazing. Yeah. Could, could you tell our, our viewers about what, what the T-Rex is like? I mean, the T-Rex is amazing. I mean, it's just here in Singapore and it's just to be able to be next to the dinosaur the way it was back then yeah. is, is breathtaking, really. And it, it's one of the few out there in the world mm. and one of the few still available also because it will be auctioned. So it, it's really something special and we're really honored to have it here in Asia and in Singapore. So it's, it's exciting. But as you said, there is jewelry, mm. there is handbags and there's painting. So there's a lot to come and see. Exciting. Uh, perhaps we could close off with you telling the viewers what can we expect next from Christie's? What does Christie's have lined up for uh, fans of perhaps vintage watches? Well, we have, we have this amazing collection from the Triazza collection where we have exceptional pocket watches that mm -hmm. will be featured. And we have one of them is the 5004 and the World Time, which is part of that collection. Mm -hmm. So that collection also is, is something truly special coming up in terms of vintage watches. But here in Singapore, we have some really nice chronographs to show 130s, 530s. Wow. So we will have a large selection of vintage watches offered this time in Hong Kong because the appeal and the taste is really getting more and more popular here with uh, Singaporean and Asian collectors alike. All right, there you have it. Christie's <laughs> Autumn Auction. 27th November in, where's the venue in Hong Kong? At the Convention Center. In the Convention Center. Yeah. This has been Revolution. Be there or be square. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.